What's up guys? Welcome to another video. This is Charlie Lin. All right, today I really would like to talk about a couple of interesting ASIC miners, including DR7, which was a really interesting miner last week. And the second miner I want to talk about is DG1 or DG1 Plus, coming from the manufacturer Alphapex. And then lastly, if we are having time, I want to cover a little about KS5L made by the manufacturer Ice River. So number one, we want to talk about DR7 and minor. To talk about DR7, we have to talk about DR5. Most people, when they hear of DR7, they would think about DR5, which was a really old miner coming out from the manufacturer in the end of 2018. I remember the last time I sourced this miner was for a client that's after some used miners. I remember it was in 2022. So the price for that DR5 was really high back then, but the clients were really much into it. Anyway, that was the waste of investment because the miner turned out to be not just broken, but also not mineable. Because the coin that can be mined using DR5 was switched to proof of stake. So why did they launch DR7? Why did they build something new based on a completely old miner? Okay, the rumor goes that Bitmain, they every month or every year, they have some KPIs to meet. And when they have no idea, they want to launch this, you know, DR7. But I really don't know if this is true or not. This is only speculation from a major distributor that I know here in China. Well, but I'm just saying this is very weird, right? Why did they just launch DR7 all of a sudden? Out of the blue. You can consider DR7 just a copy of DR5. Because the algorithm is almost the same. It's both based on Blake 256 R14. DR5 is with the DRDCR as suffix. DR7 is with SCP as the suffix. So this is a very interesting miner because given the hash rate that they can give us, 127 terahash, this is a very profitable miner. Maybe with just one miner, you can make a lot of money in one day. But the problem is, how many miners will they be? According to my communication with many of the distributors, the order of DR7 is composed of online orders and offline orders. The online orders are most of the orders that anybody can place on the bitmain.com website. You can buy the miner as a retail client. The second type of orders is distributed orders, but all of the distributed orders got canceled based on the old price. Anyway, now looking back, any of the people that managed to purchase the DR7 on Bitmain.com made a really good deal. However, we still have to ask, how many miners did they really sell? One of the distributors told me they probably have sold like 100 DR7s online. That is already a very big number. But the distributors have placed order for like 700 DR7. Imagine how much hash rate there is going to be out there. According to the distributors, they say even with just 100 DR7 miners, the hash rate is going to be completely saturated. All of the coins can be mined all of a sudden. I don't know if this is really true, but at the last minute, the Bitmain company told all of the distributors saying, because we have discovered that there is a big risk for the collapse of the market, or of this machine. We decide to retract all the orders. All the orders amount and the coupon amount will be returned. So I'm glad I did receive orders, but I didn't fulfill them. Okay, so that's the case with DR7. Is DR7 really going to be a weirdo? We really have to observe from the market in the coming couple of days. Okay, so the second miner I want to talk about is DG1 or DG1 Plus from the Alphapex company. We highly believe Alphapex is affiliated with a major distributor. And we think that from the distributor or the manufacturer itself, we will get the same price. Or we can get a slightly better price if we do some extra communication. I actually managed to get a really good price for the DG1 for a Russian client two months ago. I got a better price than him with the distributor. That's the secret and the magic of a communication and negotiation, of course. The hash rate of DG1 and DG1 Plus is 11 gigahash and 14 gigahash, respectively. 
and the hash rate variants of the DG1 are many. It can be 9.5, 10, 11, 11.8 gigahash. And the hash rate variants for the DG1 Plus is 13.6, 13.8, 14, 14.4 gigahash. The power consumption of the DG1 and DG1 Plus are 3420 watt and 3920 watt. They also have the minor DG Home 1, which is 2000 megahash, but this minor is only going to be available according to the distributor around the end of the year, which is going to be a very interesting home miner. So why do we talk about DG1 or DG1 Plus? today. It is because it is so much more powerful than the Antminer L7. When we talk about the DG1 and DG1 Plus, we have to talk about L9. Why did they announce L9 at such a time point? It's because of the launch of the DG1. Bitmain felt the threat coming from this brand new manufacturer coming out of nowhere. The capital is secretly running its magic. So how can we review DG1 and DG1 Plus? The point of difference of DG1 and DG1 Plus with the L9 is the power consumption. It is just not as efficient as L9. But the upside is a DG1 is much cheaper, is much more budget friendly than the L9. So we believe this is a very friendly miner for the Russian market because the energy costs there are much easier to control. It is very low. Or we can deduce from here it may be a friendly miner for many other areas that where people can acquire cheap electricity. DG1 and DG1 Plus are just not as efficient as L9 because the Alphapex miner is made of the 7 nanometer chipsets and L9 is made of the 5 nanometer chipsets. Well, I'm not so sure if this is the exact right parameters, but I just want to point out Alphapex cannot compete with Antminer in realizing efficiency of the chipsets. So L9 remained a rumor for a very long time. And one of the major distributors that I know told me he actually knew that there will be a L9 even when L7 was launched. But Bitmain company just didn't want to launch L9 because they didn't want to mess up with the existing market. And you have to know back then there was really not many powerful ASIC miners from other brands like Gochiao, and later we also got another brand making the L9, but it was a different and very small manufacturer. It is not as influential as the Alphapex. The L9 Dogecoin Antminer is very powerful at 16 gigahash based on 3360 watts, generating 210 joules per gigahash as efficiency. But for DG1 and DG1 Plus, the numbers are 310 joules per gigahash and 280 joules per gigahash. We really have to admit, although there are many new manufacturers, Ice River, Eiffel Packs, they really cannot compete with Bitmain company. Bitmain really is the monopoly, is the absolute kin of ASICS manufacturing. They can dominate the market as much as they wish. Alpha Packs Miner was launched in the month of March and April. That's the reason why L9 was almost immediately launched right after DG1. It was announced in April. It was announced in April that the release of L9 will be available in May. So Alpha Packs can do 11 gigahash and 14 gigahash, but Bitmain can do 16 gigahash. The difference is not too big, but can Alpha Packs beat Bitmain or can they match Bitmain? The answer is probably no. The DG1 Alphapex miner will have to do a power of 4,500 watt, which is going to be too much. In that way, the cables in the mining farms will have to be switched from C19 to C20. That is a very big change. I don't know if you are one of the hosting providers out there, but if you know this, you perhaps know that this will be a lot of hassles. Will you will think, is it really worthwhile doing the change? Why did the power setup would change? the game in the mining farm. Let's take a look at T21. The Antminer T21 Bitcoin miners could actually be a really good choice for Bitcoin mining. But the limitation is that the miner is only capable of being powered using three-phase power. Most of the farms in the whole world are not three-phase. You need to tweak your existing farm quite a bit to do three-phase farm. 
I even got a client that had to shift the miners from an existing farm to a different farm because the earlier farm can simply cannot host the T21. The T21 Bitcoin miners is capable of hashing at 190 terahash based on 3610 watt. It is actually very power efficient given the price of the miners. But just because of the power limitation, this miner became such a very quiet player. Or you can say it became a failure. Okay, I guess we do have extra time to talk about the third miner today. It is KS5L or just generally ice river miners. The reason why I want to talk about KS5L is because it is very popular. And it is also more affordable than the slightly more powerful model KS5M, which is 15 terahash. Okay, so to talk about the KS5L Ice River Miner, we have to talk about a very interesting day. It is June 12th, and it was announced on Ice River website, or at least on the Ice River Twitter page. They said they are celebrating their first year anniversary. So they are going to issue a lot of coupons, and the earlier orders of the KS5L, KS5M, and the KS0 Ultra will be reduced with coupons. At last, the, the savings for the KS5L 12 terahash was $2,040, and the savings for the KS5M 15 terahash was $3,200, which is massive. We believe it's because they found out in their manufacturing plant there is too much chipsets because the first batch of chipsets were fully developed on March this year. So the first trial production for the KS5L was very difficult, or you can call this a very awkward production. The usual production of any material miner takes three months. You can see when KS5L was launched in May, originally we said there is going to be only one hash rate, that's 12 terahash. But in the end, the actual delivery was coming with four variants, 9 terahash, 10, 11, and 12 terahash. This is a massive big range. We believe after three months, the manufacturing of KS5O became very mature and is very easy to manage. So they are able to control the hash rate to only one, that is 12 terahash. And also the price dropped significantly. And the speculation from the distributor goes like, the next batch of chipsets for the Ice River miners will be coming out in September. So that means in October or in November, we probably will see the miners will be a little bit difficult to get because the new batch of chipsets will be only available from September. So the first month, October, or the third, second month, November, will be very busy. And another reason causing the price to drop that much is probably because the Ice River company found out there is a surplus supply because there is some KS5Ls, Ice River miners, that was originally intended for the Chinese domestic market, but they experienced some difficulty in getting back to mainland China. So they were forced to be sold within Hong Kong, or at least outside mainland China. So that generated a surplus of supply. That could mean some sellers, they would have to sell at a loss. With all that being said, these few weeks or days could be a very good window for purchasing the Ice River miners because we know the supply is a little lower than the demand. Okay, maybe this is pretty much for today's video. My next video will probably be about the Bitcoin miners or the Bitcoin mining market. This is pretty much for today's updates for the ASIC miners. I hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thank you.